at least an idea of how records are made now. They're made on computers. You can do whatever with computers, but we all grew up making records on tape. It's got a certain sound. It's got a certain set of limitations. You can't go in and just go like, well, that's close enough. Wow, this is great. Rock and roll is imperfection and flaws and four or five or six or eight people playing together, and it's not going to line up. It's going to be a little fucked up. It should be. Because that's what human beings, you know, human beings aren't perfect. Just say hello. Hi. <laughs> what was really different was the environment doing it at Dave's house, which is the most comfortable <laughs> environment you can imagine. It's like, it's just fun to be there anyways. And I think the atmosphere of where you're recording has to come out on the record. I don't see how it couldn't. Look at this crew. Look at the Hawkins. What, are you kidding me? <laughs> The engineers and everybody at one point were like, okay, we're going to need this and this and this and, you know, $700,000 worth of outboard gear. And Dave's like, no, 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 no. We're making a record in a garage. I love that we're about to make an album at home. And I think the album's going to sound like that. I know it will. If we need to have three different drum sounds, wouldn't it be cool to have them cross-fade into each other, like as the other drum sound's starting to come up and the other one's going back? Wouldn't it be cool if we had a bucket of KFC right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so in recording, it usually begins with Taylor and I. The drums first with the guitar, and at first it's really to see if Taylor and I lock in with each other. Did I miss my cue? Yes, you did. I go through a process, sort of a self-loathing, I suck process when I'm recording drums. I tend to think that I'm the worst drummer in the world. Fuck. Sorry, I, I messed up the pattern a little bit. Okay. When I go back and listen, and I'm listening to what they're recording, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm all over the place. You know, it's not great. Why, God, why? Sorry, I, I broke a drumstick. And then it kind of slowly evolves and comes together after a couple hours. And you know, I have a, a drum track that I'm really proud of. The drums are finished. I'm still not sure about these days. And I could sit there and agonize all day over one little snare hit or fucking the way a groove feels. And you will. And I will. I'll uh, be playing on the radio all the time and you'll be going, I'll say, damn, ah. that fucking snare hit. Maybe we should have just pro tooled the fuck out of this record. At least you know it's perfect. <laughs> Knowing that it can't be fixed brings a factor to the way the band thinks about how they're going to play. For instance, Nate, before he would do his bass part, would go out in the tent and work out his part. So when he came in to play, he like knew everything he was going to do.
Is anybody is the bass purple or anything doing? Purple rain. Is, oh. Purple rain. Is the bass or anything doing a doing a note coming out? Is there anything like that? No. Is that gonna? You want one? You know what I mean? I'd maybe not do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Good reaction. It's very non-confrontational. Don't do that. <laughs> maybe don't do that. I would maybe not ever do that in the song. I'm the guy that plays the rhythm sort of straight up the middle. And then you have Chris. And Chris has a really like sharp and clean sense of melodic playing. And then over here, there's Pat. And it's like when Pat puts on a guitar, it just goes... <laughs> So all of those things, if they're balanced, it sounds like the Foo Fighters. Did we finally get too grungy? It's never too grungy. I wonder if it's just you're losing, like, <laughs> the, the notes. <laughs> We've had this expanded band now for the last couple albums. As a musician, it's a dream to be able to play with as many people and do as many different things as you can. So where should we start? What do you want to start with? We got to get Bob fucking rocking and rolling. What am I doing here? I just learned this. I just learned the song. I know the song. I got it in my head. What do you want me to do? When you meet someone that really helped you become the musician that you are, it, I really think it's important to acknowledge that. Bob's voice is so signature, and to have him come to my fucking house and do it on my fucking record blows me away. All right, cool. You want to do the bridge? What do you want to do, Bob? Come on in. I didn't write the middle section of the song because I wanted to write it with Bob while Bob was there. But I didn't have the words. So I sort of explained it, and we tried it once, just with phonetic crap. And I'm now on, and Is that gonna make sense? I think so. Okay, let me write something really quick. <laughs> okay, five, five minute lyrics. Okay, give me a five minute lyric break. <laughs> Clock's running. And then from now on, and from now on. Dad? Yeah? Remember you said you'll swim? I know, I have to write these words really quick so I can go sing it. Okay. Okay. One, two, you know what to do. That's so good. That is so Sweet. fucking cool, you guys. It's, 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 like to hear, it's, it's, it's good. It's really good. Some of the songs wow. still had question marks, you know. The biggest song being I Should Have Known. That song became sort of the X factor in the album.
I kind of feel like I should have known is a song that's about Dave's past. And I think there are definitely references in there about Nirvana and about Kurt. Whew. Fucking A, man. It's really good. When I first started writing that song, it was about someone else that I was involved with. And at the end of the day, I said to myself, I should have known that this was going to happen. I should have known. But when I sing that song, it's hard not to think about all of the times in my life that's happened. Hey, Chris. Hello. We had Chris Novoselic come in and play bass on I Should Have Known. That was a very special moment, because I had not been in the same room with Dave and Chris since we finished Nevermind. that back and forth twice then it does the turnaround chord yeah it goes it goes d sharp g d sharp g f c and, and it, it goes back it in repeats d sharp over. g d sharp oh so yeah. a six chord Yavor. How was the tone? I th fuck, it sounds gnarly. It's there, it's done. It's <laughs> <laughs> all you get, motherfucker. I, I was not surprised that Dave asked Chris to play on the record. I was surprised it hadn't happened any other time in the last 16 years. You never realize how important the bass sound is to the sound of a band until you put it in another band and go, oh, there it is. I think what Chris played on the song was the absolute perfect thing for him to do on a Foo Fighters record. I think that might be the ending we found it. <laughs> I'm gonna my phone. Ice cream truck. It usually takes us a while to name an album. But I decided to call the record Wasting Light because I f honestly feel like I don't want to let one minute of this go without really feeling it. 